Good morning, everyone. This is Bobby Kosowitz on behalf of Ego Raider. Thank you for joining us this morning. I have on the line industry veteran and technical director for Eco Raider, Dennis Judy. Today, Dennis will be talking about our green triple action mosquito com control product, ER3 Insect Killer by Eco Raider. Dennis, can you hear me? I sure can, Bobby. I hope everything's coming in loud and clear. I can hear you great. Would you All like right. to get started? We will. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, glad you could join us. Uh, we are here today to talk about our new product, ER3, which uh, is a green triple action mosquito control product that uh, is just now coming to market for the first time. Uh, and this is one of the, uh, you know, things we think is going to change some of the things we're doing in the industry and give us a lot of value uh, added support for our mosquito control efforts. So uh, I want to start off by talking about just mosquito reduction and reduction is a key word here. I, I never really try to offer people mosquito control, although we will control some mosquitoes, but the word reduction I think becomes a big part of what we're trying to offer. So what you need to understand is that one of the greatest defenses we have against mosquito-borne illnesses really is the pest control professional, it's you. Uh, and you can help home homeowners and you can help your commercial clients alike uh, to reduce their exposure to mosquito bites. And you can suggest corrective actions along the way. Uh, so the best thing to do is do a very, very thorough inspection, looking for the breeding sites where uh, Mosquitoes like to breed in water, uh, and you can offer a treatment to control the, the mosquitoes in those sites, as well as look for their resting sites. Uh, suggest corrective actions to help them control water situations around the property, and certainly provide a lot of education. Educating your customer about mosquitoes is a vital part uh, of your role in the overall mosquito reduction effort. So it's very pertinent that we start off looking at the mosquito's life cycle because this plays a huge role in what we do in mosquito reduction. Uh, of course, they have a complete life cycle. The adult lays the eggs. Um, from the legs, eggs, they go to the larvae stage, uh, the wigglers. Uh, the larvae develop then into a pupae that kind of floats on top of the water until it uh, develops into the adult inside that little shell and then uh, emerges out uh, through the surface of the water as the adult to start the process over. All of this takes place in about a week, so uh, that's critical. Uh, the eggs are either laid singly uh, or in little rafts of whole bunches, maybe even hundreds of eggs uh, stuck together that float on the water surface or single eggs that can be stuck uh, to the sides of containers or just, just about any place. It's important to realize that these eggs are very, very tiny. Uh, you know, a raft of eggs uh, all stuck together sometimes is not even as big as a single grain of rice. So you, you have to uh, consider that it's very, very hard sometimes to see the eggs even when they're there without looking very, very closely. Um, the larvae then, when it hatches from the eggs in just uh, really only a couple days to hatch out, it will go through four instars uh, as it develops. And what it does is, you know, this is the wiggler that goes through the water. Uh, they do have an air tube typically that they uh, breathe through. So they'll stay close to the top of the water so that they can stick that uh, tube up and breathe through it, or they'll lay flat against the surface of the water to do their breathing. Uh, but they can dive and they'll go down to feed on bacteria or other organic things in the water. And they do that through uh, sort of a siphoning type effect where they just kind of go through the water and siphon out the debris in the water and, and use the organic matter as food source. And then after about four more days, they will pupate. Uh, and the pupa, again, has to have that air tube so that it doesn't drown and um, uh, it'll stay near the surface of the water as well. And you see them floating around in there as it develops inside the uh, pupa case into the adult that then, then emerges. So it's critical to understand that all this can happen in as little as about a week. 
Uh, some cases, those eggs can lay dormant for quite a while before they hatch, uh, just waiting on enough water or waiting on certain instances for uh, the conditions to be right before they hatch. So, uh, so the time frame for this can be very, very short, or it could be uh, a pretty long time frame depending on the conditions. But uh, what we're concerned with really is that uh, ability that they can take the complete life cycle in just about a week. So we start off with uh, a thorough survey of the site, and this is necessary to help you determine the potential for the mosquitoes to breed. Um, it's also very important that you locate any of the resting sites that they use. Mosquitoes like shaded areas, so they may get under buildings or uh, under decks or under the eaves of the house or uh, most typically where we find them though is they'll get on the undersides of the leaves and the shrubs and uh, low-lying things like that and that's where they like to rest so those are the target areas for us to treat so while you're doing this survey of the property that you're about to treat you have to ask yourself several questions uh, and among those are what are the structural problems that are conducive to holding water uh, if they have structural conditions, then it, it would be advisable to try to get those corrected. Uh, you also want to ask yourself what items are present that have the ability to retain water. So do they have containers? Uh, are there things there? Are there plants there that can hold water? Uh, all those kind of things that are very, very important to uh, uh, setting up a quality program. And then the third question is, what in the environment is going to provide a potential breeding site or that shaded resting site for the adult mosquito? And if you can answer those things during the course of your survey, then that will pinpoint the areas that you need to address for treatment, uh, as well as other modifications. What we've done at EcoRader is we've developed this mosquito reduction inspection report for your use. Uh, you can get this from our website. I think we're probably going to package it with our literature as well. Uh, you're free to copy it, use it at your, uh, your bequest. Uh, uh, but it's just kind of a checklist to help you look for things out there. And we'll refer back to this as we go through the program today. But use this as your basic guide to conduct a very thorough survey of the property. Um, and as you're doing the survey, kind of check off the things on there. Check the sites that you identify and then note their location on the report. And then uh, as you're doing the treatment, you can also use this as a report and communication tool back to your customer. So check off your findings on this report. Make a note of containers that hold water. Where are they? What can you do with them? How do you address those? Uh, are you going to use a control strategy? Is it going to be treatment or is it going to be a source reduction type deal? And then what method will you use in control? You're going to use larvicides to attack it, adulticides, or just some cultural measure. And again, we'll, uh, we'll look at these as we go through it. But look for a lot of different things. Look for structural elements such as uh, flat roofs. Um, look for things that uh, uh, include blocked or poorly drained rain gutters and downspouts and drainage lines. You, you see the list in that uh, report. So just all those things need to be looked at. So source reduction really is uh, the next step in this program. Remember, we said that mosquitoes take about seven days to go through their life. Uh, they complete that cycle. It's important to note that the first three stages, the eggs, the larvae, and the pupae stages, all are aquatic. So that should tell you something. That tells you that it's very, very important to find the water sources and to try to rid the, the property of those stagnant water sources. That's really the best way to prevent mosquitoes from building up is to remove the stagnant water. And if it can't be removed, then certainly it can be treated. So that can be accomplished in quite a few ways. 
One method that you can use is just to physically remove the item if it has a potential to hold stagnant water. Uh, you can dispose of containers, uh, get rid of any bottles that you find, any jars, any pails, things like that, uh, and put them in a covered receptacle so that the mosquitoes can't get to them. Uh, can't say enough about old tires. Get rid of any old tires that are laying around because they naturally hold water on the insides. Empty water from other items, such as garbage cans or garden pails or garden implements, uh, anything like that and then cover those items with lids or turn them upside down so that they drain and dry out. And the next thing you want to do is uh, teach your homeowners a little bit about this water situation. Uh, get them to change water in the bird bath on a routine basis. Remember that seven week cycle. Uh, and if it's too difficult to do that, then again, we have uh, other methods that we can use as part of our treatment that we'll talk about later. Um, but take a look at pet dishes uh, that may hold water for an extended period of time. Uh, any flower pots or urns that they have and think about those bromeliad plants. Those are the ones with the big leafy structures that the water can uh, hold down inside of. Uh, those should be planted in some kind of a pot that you can turn upside down to empty the water out of frequently. Uh, otherwise, mosquitoes can breed right down in the prawns of those plants. Uh, Small wading pools, toys, things like that. Just tell them after they use them, turn them upside down, empty them, store them away. Uh, don't let water build up in them. Uh, and don't let the water get stagnant in them. So the homeowner can do a, a big part too in helping with the program. Sometimes it's uh, just not possible to get rid of that water in, in a method like that. So you might want to use some kind of a mechanical alteration to stop that item from holding water. Uh, it could be as simple as opening the drain plug in the bottom of something. You know, a boat has a drain plug. If they don't drain it, it holds water. And mosquitoes can get down in there and breed. Uh, other things have drain plugs in them. So pop the drain plug open, let the water out. Uh, you got a tire swing uh, or something else there that uh, like a barbecue grill or something of that nature that water can build up in. Um, just take a, a drill and drill a small hole in the bottom of it so that the water drains out of it uh, and you no longer have a, an area where mosquitoes can breed. Um, if it's not possible to drain them, um, then, of course, again, we can treat with a larvicide into those standing water areas, and we'll talk about that shortly. But again, always remember that you've got the Mosquito Reduction Inspection Report, and you can use it to check off these items as a source reduction as part of your control strategy, and then make comments as appropriate on that report. After you've done the source reduction, then you can use cultural methods uh, to reduce the potential sources of mosquito breeding or to help you eliminate their potential resting sites that could be an attractant to the adult mosquitoes. Cultural controls include uh, things like proper mowing, drainage, uh, or mechanical alteration of those potential sites. So the proper mowing and trimming techniques will reduce the resource areas that are required by the mosquitoes for a resting site. So best treatment would be required to control the adults if they don't have a lot of large, tall weeds where they can go and, and find shelter and rest. Uh, trimming bushes, the same effect. Uh, ditches can be drained or culverts can be installed to move water away from a site to protect it. Low spots in a yard could be filled in to prevent water from standing. Um, we talked about bromeliads, uh, the water holding plants. So again, they should be planted in a pot that can be literally picked up, turned over, and the water dumped out of them. Um, crawl spaces have screens. Sometimes those screens aren't very fine mesh, so they might want to consider putting a fine mesh screen over some of those ventilators in their crawl spaces or screening off the areas under their decks so that they can't get in there and find places to rest. Make sure the rain gutters are cleaned, uh, downspouts are cleaned, keep them repaired so that the water flows freely uh, away from them. 
Um, these types of, of mechanical alterations can prevent water from standing in areas. Um, if you have a boat, uh, a pool cover, something like that, sometimes those tarps sag and uh, it might be as simple as just increasing the slope on that tarp above those items to make sure the water runs off rather than puddling down in there. And then a lot of people have uh, small ponds, little fish ponds, uh, water gardens. Uh, and if they put pumps or filters in those, it keeps the water from becoming stagnant. As long as that water is moving and the mosquitoes are not able to develop in there. And then any other repairs that can stop the water from standing in a, a given spot is going to be very beneficial to your mosquito reduction program. So once again, uh, your mosquito reduction inspection report has a place where you can specifically mark off the cultural control methods that are being used or suggested. Well, let's talk about the treatment methods a little bit then. We have two primary treatment methods uh, after we've done all the uh, source reduction and cultural control methods. Uh, so the proper treatment regimen is important to control the mosquitoes after those uh, cultural and, and source reduction efforts are utilized. And they include the use of larvicides to prevent the adult mosquito from emerging. And then the use of adulticides to knock down any adult populations and to establish an ongoing barrier for mosquito reduction. During the larvae and the pupae stages, these developing mosquitoes are confined in their, their watery site until they emerge as an adult. And at that point, they're free to fly off. So the application of the larvicide product to the watery site during this period of development can result in very large numbers of the larvae being controlled before they can even, even become adults. Uh, Eco Raiders ER3 works as a larvicide, so it's uh, a very positive for the ER3 is that we can actually apply it right into the stagnant water and it will kill the, the larvae uh, and uh, keeps us from having to use some secondary product in those situations. So while you're actually doing your treatment with the adulticide, you can treat the stagnant water as well uh, without harming anything. Potential treatment areas, the ER3 as a larvicide, it's a big list there. I'll, I'll let you kind of read down through it rather than reading them all to you, but uh, uh, quite extensive list and I'm sure there's other things that could be added to that. Just keep in mind that when you use ER3 as your larvicide, it will not adversely affect humans, animals, fish, or the vegetation where you're putting it. So again, use your mosquito reduction inspection report. Uh, remember to check off source reduction or treatment as your control strategy. And if you're using larvicide, put treatment as your control and uh, indicate the areas where you've treated with the larvicide. Adulticides uh, can be used in a couple different ways. Uh, sometimes we do space treatments with it. The adult mosquitoes are able to freely fly to a, a non-protected place. Uh, so these space treatments can be rendered uh, to the air to quickly reduce the adult populations uh, in a limited area. And typically because you're putting it in the air, it's not for a real lengthy period of time. So. You're knocking them down and it stays airborne for a short period of time. Uh, the second method is barrier treatments, which are going to provide much longer lasting controls. And we'll talk about these, these uh, different types of treatments as we go forward. But the space treatments are uh, very helpful in circumstances that warrant a quick knockdown. Uh, so this might be things like someone's having a party or a wedding or a picnic. Uh, or some other special occasion. And the key thing to keep in mind here as well is the timing of your application. You want to do it uh, uh, not immediately before, but soon enough before so that you have the uh, ability to have the product working well for the extended time when it's necessary. Uh, remember the uh, 
sometimes night flyers versus day flyers uh, in the mosquito work. Certain species are more active in the daytime, certain ones are dusk and dawn. So you want to kind of time it to be uh, critical for it to knock down the flyers while they're there. Um, space treatments place the product in the air and then it floats in the breeze. Um, it'll contact and knock down the adult mosquitoes. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a, a fogging, if you will, in that manner. Uh, it's not really coming out as a fog as much as it is a mist, but uh, it's an excellent way to clear a large area of the adult mosquitoes before the, uh, the event takes place because the product is going to float through the air and then also get into the nooks and crannies where they might be resting. Um, so how long that lasts, whether it's just a few hours to a few days, is going to depend on a lot of different factors. Uh, and that includes your knowledge of how and when and where you're going to apply the product. Uh, what is the climate conditions going to be that day? Uh, and sometimes other parameters that you really can't control. When you're using the adult aside for barrier controls, uh, barrier control is one of the more effective and longer lasting methods for mosquito reduction. So it readily lends itself to a large area or it can be very, very productive in a small backyard. Many, many years ago, we realized that by applying a perimeter strip of barrier protection, the mosquitoes, even though they're capable of flying over that barrier strip, resisted the treated area within that barrier. And that proved extremely effective in areas like our backyards and homes. So the barrier controls typically involve the use of a water-based application of our ER3. Uh, ER3 has a blend of natural ingredients. Uh, they find them as a light mist with a sprayer of some type. Uh, preferably one that has a high volume air blast to push the product deep into the foliage, uh, put those leaves over, get the undersides coated, uh, and get all the shaded areas treated, such as the storage sheds or uh, playhouses up under the decks, uh, underneath all those things, around the animal shelters, things of that nature. ER3 can be applied as a barrier spray very readily. Um, that particular machine is the one that I use. Uh, it's easily applied through a handheld sprayer as well, uh, or through a backpack sprayer, or uh, the mist blowing equipment like the steel and other brands that are available to the market, or it can actually be sprayed through power spray units as well. Um, I'm not sure we have any aerial applicators on today, but uh, I assume if they uh, really wanted to, they could use it in the airplanes. And uh, um, so it's very, very uh, credible to be sprayed by just about any means possible to spray out the product. So again, we'll go back to the reporting and the communication then. Uh, proper use of this Mosquito reduction inspection report on every visit can help you establish good customer relations as well. Um, it can help you leave a roadmap for your customer on what they can do to help with the program. Be sure to identify all the breeding sites, check off the appropriate control strategies and the control methods for each of those and then use the comment lines to further explain to your customers what is being done by you or what needs to be done by them to have the most effective results. Keep in mind that there are other communication tools available out there to help educate your customer about mosquito reduction. Um, you probably can provide handouts to communicate information about their own personal protection. Uh, and reduction in their exposure to mosquito bites. Um, handouts could also give them information about breeding site prevention and about hard breed reduction activities. You might go to some university websites, uh, uh, Centers for Disease Control, the CDC has uh, things that you can download uh, about mosquitoes, uh, mosquito control associations, uh, County Extension Agents, State Department of Agriculture, 
uh, just a various and a sundry uh, large amount of associations, uh, state pest control associations, uh, NPMA, uh, and a lot of these can assist you with uh, developing handouts or even supply handouts to you for that purpose. But the communication with your customer uh, needs to be enhanced a great deal. So remember that your training is going to emphasize the importance of understanding both the mosquito biology and habits as it relates to your strategies and control methods, as well as the treatment that you need to render. <clears throat> you have to set the right expectations with your customers that they'll have for your mosquito reduction program. Use your knowledge, use that thorough inspection process. Uh, use some, some dynamic communication measures with your customer, and that's going to make you the most important part of this entire program. So together, you and your customer can reduce their exposure to mosquito bites and uh, help prevent the spread of mosquito-borne illness is really what it's all about anyway. So that makes us all uh, protectors of public health. Let's talk a little bit about the product itself, uh, ER3. Uh, we called it ER3 because of its triple action uh, process. Uh, it can be used as an adulticide, as a larvicide, and as a spatial repellent. Uh, so triple action effect, uh, and it's truly a green product. So uh, we like to call it the next generation of mosquito and general pest control. Uh, can be used in a lot of different areas. Um, these next couple of slides come as part of our product brochure, which is available as well from uh, our website or through the vendors. Um, but the triple action uh, formula we just talked about, lasting uh, service with total protection in one application, uh, very flexible use on the label. Uh, you can dilute it down by either four ounces per gallon or eight ounces if you have some extremely bad situations per gallon or whatever ratios in between. Uh, it's effective on a broad spectrum of insects as well, not just mosquitoes, but uh, primarily formulated for the use against mosquitoes. It's compatible with a lot of different equipment types. We talked about that, and you can use it in a lot of different environments. Uh, the use of this product actually is gonna help maximize your revenues in, in your uh, program. You can expand your service offerings by offering green mosquito control. Uh, you can save money with this, get high job efficiency with it. Uh, Remember, you won't need to be buying uh, a second product to use as a larvicide when you can just use the same product as both the adulticide and larvicide. It's going to save you in cost of product as well as in time that it takes to apply all this. Um, and hopefully uh, you'll see, as we've seen from our field trials, that it will help reduce callbacks from your customers. Uh, it's especially true when we're leaving the larvicide there that uh, is going to extend the ability to keep new ones from emerging. Uh, and then the other part of this is its low impact on the environment. It is a green formula. Uh, it actually contains four specific different natural ingredients uh, as a blend. It's 25B exempt listed as a minimum risk product by the EPA. So the safety factor is there around children and pets and fish and wild animals. Uh, very low odor, low impact, non-staining. Uh, as a matter of fact, when we say it's low odor, we, we noticed in the field trials that some of our customers actually are telling us that it had a pleasant smell to it, lemongrass is one of the, the products in there. And the lemongrass formulation actually gave their yards a pleasant smell when we were done. Uh, so in, in most cases, there's no requirement then for any kind of spray notifications with its use because of its low impact. As we said, you can use it in a lot of different environments. Uh, and there you see, it's great for backyards. Uh, it's great to do the spatial treatments before parties and barbecues. Uh, 
uh, its green formulation. So it would work very well and, and be safety conscious as well when you're treating around schools and daycare centers and parks and playgrounds where children congregate. And then uh, as well as the larvicidal action in small ponds, we wouldn't want you to go out to a huge uh, uh, acreage pond and try to use it as a larvicide, but certainly in those small water gardens and backyard uh, fish ponds and things like that, uh, the larvicidal action can give you some very, very good response. It was tested. University of Rutgers did some tests for us. Uh, the, the direct direct spray mortality against uh, Aedes aegypti. Uh, in 30 minutes, we had about a 92% knockdown of all the adults. And within 24 hours, uh, all the existing mosquitoes were killed on contact. Uh, without recovering. Um, as far as its larvicidal action, uh, what they did was actually mixed it in the water. They let the water age for a week and for two weeks, and then they added the larvae to the water. And in the water that aged for one week, uh, when they added the larvae in, it killed 100% of the larvae within 24 hours. Uh, when they added it to the water that had aged for two weeks with the larvicide in it, uh, it killed 93% of the larvae after 24 hours. So it was still being effective two weeks uh, after it had been applied. Uh, so we think that actually adds to our abilities out there to uh, get good knockdown in that first week uh, and then get the uh, larvicidal action for another couple of weeks, uh, which can extend the life of the program. We are very strong uh, uh, test results there. As far as the spatial repellency, uh, again, we used a one hour age dry residual to see what would happen. Would it repel mosquitoes? Uh, and we noticed that it had significant repelling activity. Uh, we compared it to Cutter. I think everybody's heard of Cutter, which is used to repel mosquitoes from people. Uh, and you can see that compared to Cutter, uh, it, it actually did much better than the Cutter did as a repellent. Now, we're not telling people to go spray it on themselves, but certainly uh, it does prevent mosquitoes from entering a treated space. Uh, so those things like the backyard parties and the weddings and things like that, it can help keep the mosquitoes away for quite a while. As a matter of fact, uh, we treated a backyard party, uh, I say party, it was a wedding on a friend's huge back deck, uh, my son's wedding to be specific. And uh, the people never used the deck because they were being eaten alive by mosquitoes every evening. And we went out the day before the wedding uh, and, and actually the wedding was going to be at uh, about six o'clock in the evening. So we went out the day before at about six o'clock in the evening. Uh, remember daytime versus nighttime flyers. And we actually did the treatment. And the next day at the wedding, we did not have one specific person that mentioned being bitten by a mosquito. Um, Spatial activity over time, uh, you can see that it does uh, uh, go away over time, and, and most things will. Uh, but you can see that uh, in the first hour, it stayed very, very strong. After 12 hours, uh, it uh, started falling a little bit. In 24 hours, it had reduced a, a good bit. So. Uh, we're probably going to say that probably a couple of days is what you should expect to get out of this with spatial activity. But again, your timing is critical. And uh, if you can go out and knock down all the adults uh, by doing it at the right time of day uh, and then getting some repellency, uh, you know, up to two days with it, uh, they're not going to be able to breed and reproduce more for the seven day cycle. So you should see tremendous results there. So it does have field proven performance. We did test trials with it last summer, uh, several different companies, uh, both in North Georgia and South Georgia areas is where we did our field trials. Uh, 
so the adulticide worked very, very well. Uh, the spatial repellency, it showed that they would avoid treated spaces. And then working as a larvicide uh, was very, very impressive uh, for reducing it for an additional two weeks or so. And you can see a couple of folks that served as our testees there. Uh, J.R. Jackson, our mosquito supervisor at All Good Pest Solutions, uh, indicated that with the accounts they treated, they had no callbacks. Uh, their customers seemed to be pleased. Uh, and this is one that said, and we didn't even ask them, but the customer said they liked the smell of their yard. So we attribute that to the lemongrass smell. Uh, and then he noticed cost effectiveness because he didn't have to change to use other larvicides and he didn't have to keep running to the truck to change out things. He could use the one product and uh, do everything with it. We had similar response from uh, Randy Martin at Home Tech Exterminating. Uh, Randy specifically had some green accounts, some condo associations that he wanted to try it on. And uh, he actually said it worked better than what they had been doing. And he really liked the savings on it as well for being able to treat around drains and plantings with the same product uh, and indicated that it worked very, very well. And that's kind of the results we were seeing uh, in most of the field trials that we did. So what I'd like to share with you now is a video that kind of ties all this back together, uh, shows you with an actual application, uh, walks you through the uh, surveying and uh, source reduction and cultural methods and the whole nine yards. This video is available on our website, uh, ecoraderpnp.com. You can go there and uh, take a look at it, or it has a QR code on our product brochures that you can scan and play the video. So uh, I'd like you to take a look at this video to try to tie it all together here, and then we'll get back with you. Hi, I'm Dennis Judy. I'm the technical director for EcoRader, and today we're going to introduce you to our unique new formulation, our next generation called ER3. ER3 is a green formula that exhibits triple action effect. That's why we named it ER3. Not only does it serve a, a purpose against mosquitoes as an adulticide, but it also replaces other products in your arsenal because it can be used as a larvicide as well. And the unique formulation that we have here also gives us a spatial repellency. So mosquitoes can be repelled from areas where they are, they are not wanted. This new green formulation is going to help you immensely as you go into your mosquito reduction programs. One of the first things that we do is a thorough inspection. We will walk the property and do a thorough survey of the site to determine any potential for mosquitoes to breed or to locate their resting sites. When we do this, we have to ask ourselves three questions. Number one, are there any structural problems that are conducive to water retention? The second question we have to ask is what items might be present that have the ability to retain water? And third, we have to ask, does the environment itself provide potential breeding sites? As we get involved in the inspection, we will use the Mosquito Reduction Inspection Report as our basic guideline. The report is a checklist of potential breeding sites that may be found as you walk the property. Check off those sites identified during your inspection and note their location on the report. While you're doing this report, look for structural elements such as flat roofs, blocked or poorly drained rain gutters, downspouts, the drain lines on air conditioning units, low decks and open crawl spaces, unscreened vents that lead into the property structure. Also check for detached storage sheds that have the potential to provide a breeding or resting site for the mosquitoes. While doing your inspection, make note of any container that is holding or has a potential to hold water. Remember, this could be something as small as a bottle cap, or it could be as large as a boat or a swimming pool. Look for tree holes. Search for heavy weeds or shrubs, any plants, any small ponds or wooded areas that provide potential for standing water, and also look for all the shaded resting sites. 
The next phase of our program is source reduction. Mosquitoes take about seven days to thoroughly go through their life cycle. The first three stages in their cycle are the aquatic stages. The eggs, the larvae, the pupae all develop in water until they emerge as adults. Therefore, the best way to prevent mosquito breeding is to remove stagnant water, and this can be accomplished in a number of ways. One method is to physically remove the item that has potential to hold stagnant water. Things such as garden implements that have the ability to retain water, garbage cans, small pails, so empty the water from these, cover them with lids, or turn them upside down so that they drain. Another method that we can use to control mosquitoes is cultural controls. Cultural methods can be utilized to reduce the potential sources of mosquito breeding. They can also be used to eliminate potential resting sites that can attract adult mosquitoes. Proper mowing and trimming reduce the resource areas required by mosquitoes for their resting sites. Rain gutters can be cleaned and repaired so that all water flows freely into and out of the downspouts without collecting in the gutters. Standing water in small ponds or in pools can be helped by using pumps and filters to prevent stagnation. If the water is moving, then the pupae stage of the mosquito cannot live in it. A proper treatment regimen is important for the control of mosquitoes after you've done your source reduction efforts and your cultural control practices. All right, before we get started with our treatment, I wanted to give you a few tips on the mixing of the product. The ER3 comes in this convenient tip and measure uh, gallon size container. So the first thing I'm going to instruct you to do is shake it up real good. There are four different active ingredients in this product. We want to make sure they're all blended well before you put them into your sprayer. Now you have an option here as well. Uh, you really need to agitate things good in the sprayer before you start treating. This is a big old heavy sprayer. I don't like picking it up and shaking it. So what I like to tell people to do is measure with your tip and pour. You can get the right amount of product into the reservoir, the four ounce mark, take that product and put it in a separate container. I'll go through that process again because I want to use eight ounces of product for this application. Get it measured into your tip and pour in the right quantity. Now that we've got it into this other container that has water in it already, I can agitate this mixture before I put it into the spray tank. So just take that, agitate it really well, and now you can take this mixture that you have, pour it into your sprayer, and you'll be ready to go. This new product contains a blend of natural ingredients that are applied as a light mist with a sprayer. Preferably a high volume air blast that pushes the product into the foliage and into other difficult to reach spots. This light mist can be applied to grass, shrubbery, foliage, under shaded areas such as storage sheds and decks, and around animal shelters, dog houses, and etc. Eco Raiders formula ER3 works well as a larvicide and can be applied to potential breeding sites that you are unable to control through physical or cultural methods. Potential treatment areas for ER3 include things like bird baths, urns, water gardens, tree holes, rain barrels, flower pots, roof gutters, ornamental foundations, and when used as directed, ER3 will not adversely affect humans, animals, fish, or vegetation. Adult mosquitoes can fly freely to any non-protected place. Barrier treatments will provide longer lasting controls to areas where mosquitoes like to hide and rest. A more effective and a longer lasting method of mosquito reduction is through the use of barrier controls. Barrier controls readily lend themselves to large areas or to small backyards. 
Years ago, it was discovered that by applying a perimeter strip of barrier protection, mosquitoes, while they're capable of flying over the barrier strip, resisted that treated area within the barrier. Space treatments will place the product in the air, which floats with the breeze to contact and knock down adult mosquitoes. So this fogging type treatment is an excellent way to clear a large area of adult mosquitoes because the product floats into almost every nook and cranny. Reporting procedures are especially important to the success of mosquito reduction programs. Proper use of the mosquito reduction inspection report on each visit is vital in establishing good customer relations and enlisting the customer's support in your mosquito reduction program. Be sure you identify all applicable breeding sites and check off the appropriate control strategies and control methods for each. Your training will emphasize the importance of understanding mosquito biology and habits as related to your reduction strategies and your control methods. Customer education is just as critical. You must set the proper expectations that they will have for your mosquito reduction program. Your knowledge and thorough inspection process, coupled with dynamic communication to your customer, will make you the most important part of this program. Together, you and your customer can reduce their exposure to mosquito bites and help prevent the spread of mosquito-borne illnesses. You are indeed a protector of public health. So there you have it. Our unique new formulation, EcoRader ER3, has been very helpful in our mosquito reduction efforts. With this new generation formulation, we've been able to achieve triple action mosquito reduction with one single product. This product has been very useful as an adulticide, as well as giving us the opportunity to use the same product as our larvicide application. All this while giving us some spatial repellency, which will keep mosquitoes from an unwanted area. I think you'll find if you try this product that it will save you a lot of effort, a lot of time, uh, less need for other products to be used in your arsenal, and you'll get favorable results from this unique new green formulation, EcoRader ER3. Okay, so uh, some of the benefits behind ER3, we'll just review those one more time. First of all, it does work uh, great as an adult aside, uh, so it will kill the mosquitoes on contact. Uh, it can be used as a larvicide as well, uh, kill them in standing stagnant water. Uh, it delivers that lasting spatial repellency. So. The benefit really with the larvicide action, you, you can use fewer products. Uh, you don't have to buy other uh, uh, larvicide products to use out there in these smaller stagnant areas. Uh, and you don't have to keep running back and forth uh, to change out products as you're working. So it reduces your application time. Uh, a couple things we haven't mentioned yet. Uh, uh, really no resistance issues as well with this. A lot of the products that we're using out there currently for mosquito reduction efforts are the uh, pyrethrin products, synthetic pyrethroids. Uh, and we all know what uh, pyrethroids do when we overuse them. They, they tend to develop over a period of time and generations of insects some resistance problems. So the use of ER3 in your arsenal is going to help prevent resistance issues from coming up. Uh, the lemongrass oil in the product, as we said, we'll uh, leave it with a pleasant smell. Uh, that was unsolicited feedback from a couple of the, the field trials that we did, uh, which I thought was uh, pretty neat to understand. Uh, there's no need for an adjuvant with this product. A lot of folks want to add something as a sticker uh, to make things stick to the bushes. Well, this product, one of the ingredients is sodium lauryl sulfate. Uh, sodium lauryl sulfate in and of itself acts as a fantastic sticker. Um, one of our technicians in the field trials actually one of his comments in his feedback to me 
was I could actually see the product sticking to the underside of the leaves where what we had been using before would just drip off. Uh, so when they can see it actually sticking, that, that proves to you that it's staying put. It's going to be where you want it. Uh, you noticed in the video as well that when I was doing the application, uh, I really wasn't wearing any kind of protection. Uh, didn't need sleeves, didn't need gloves, didn't need eye protection. Uh, uh, the product itself with the uh, safety data sheet does not require those types of protectants to be worn when applying it. So uh, I know for a fact from uh, previous life that the technicians hated wearing long sleeves and uh, uh, all that protective gear out there in the 90 degree weather that we get here in Georgia when they're out there applying. So uh, it can actually uh, help your technicians as far as that as well. All, all I would suggest is that after each application, they be able to uh, at least wash uh, their arms, their hands, their exposed skin a little bit. Uh, but it shouldn't be an irritant to them in any manner and uh, very, very safe to apply for uh, for the handler as well as for um, the people at the end use. So the safety factor is critical as well. So we have EcoRader uh, ER3. It is now available through your vendors. Uh, the triple action formula, uh, a, a truly green product, um, combination of the, of the natural ingredients, uh, with the safety factor, uh, just can't speak uh, well enough about what we're finding out about its use. If you need to contact us, there's the phone number for uh, Renio Tech, our parent company. Um, email us at info at ecoraderpmp.com or if you want to go on the website and check out uh, the uh, brochures, uh, www.ecoraderpmp.com will get you in there and you can take a look at uh, some more of the, uh, the things we just showed you. So with that, uh, Miss Bobby, I think I'm finished. I will turn the show back over to you. Well, thank you, Dennis, for that very informative presentation. We appreciate your time and your sharing of knowledge with us all. Um, at this time, we would like to open it up for questions. If you have any questions, please utilize the chat section of the box on the GoToWebinar control panel. And um, ask away. Dennis is here to answer questions for a bit longer. OK. So we have one question. Do you have efficacy studies on your product? What species is it effective against? Um, what is the mortality rates? Um, let's take this one at a time. This is the same person asking the question. But Dennis, um, we're being asked, do you have efficacy studies on your product? I believe you went over this a bit, but would you like to touch on that again? Yeah, the uh, brochure that we showed you the pages of with the Rutgers results, uh, and these were substantiated with our field trials as well, showed that uh, we were getting pretty good mortality. Uh, the quick knockdown with the uh, uh, you know, within the 24 hours, 100% knockdown against them. And then the uh, residual of the larvicide action for upwards of two weeks after it was applied to the water, stagnant water sources. Uh, and, and that information is available in the brochure and on the, uh, the web page that you see there. Great. Um, what mosquito species is ER3 effective against? Uh, primarily what we used it against were the, uh, the you know, the, the typical ones here in the southeast, which uh, the Anopheles, uh, we used it against the Asian tiger mosquitoes. Uh, pretty much is going to be good against any of the mosquitoes that are uh, uh, living in this area. Uh, again, it, it's more so where are they rather than which ones are they. Uh, and, and treating their breeding sites and treating their resting sites. Great. Um, what are the mortality rates, time to kill, et cetera, against the control sample? 
Uh, again, I think we covered that in the uh, test results in the brochure. The mortality rates for the adulticide quick knockdown was, uh, uh, you know, 100% in 24 hours. It was, I want to say, let me review myself so I don't mislead you. I want to say it was 93% in, 92% uh, in 30 minutes. Uh, and that was knocked down with no recovery. But within uh, 24 hours, we had 100% mortality. Great. Um, is your product registered for use in Washington State? I'm sorry? Is the product registered for use in Washington State? Uh, that I do not have an answer for you. I'm sure somebody can uh, provide that information to you. Uh, as far as state-by-state state registrations, I would contact your uh, distributors in that area and they should be able to supply that information or you can email us at info at ecoraderpmp.com. Uh, my first guess is that it probably is, uh, but I can't specifically tell you that. I, I'm too far east of Washington State to know the answer. Sorry about that. Um, another one coming in, Dennis, how much product per gallon of water do you use for mixing? Uh, it has different mixing ratios. Uh, we suggest for light infestations uh, in uh, prevention, you can use as little as four ounces of product per gallon. Uh, if you have heavier infestations, we have applied it at eight ounces of product per gallon of water. Um. Another question coming in, um, where can they find a label on ER3? Okay, the label on ER3 is available right there on the website, uh, ecoraderpnp.com. And also, we want to mention that the protocol mentioned here and the checklist are both available to download from ecoraderpnp.com as well. Um, could you touch upon the cost of ER3 um, per finished gallon? Uh, the cost is going to be determined really by your distributor. We believe we've got it in a, uh, a, a fairly placed market situation. Uh, I don't get involved in the actual uh, selling to the vendors. Uh, so it would be hard for me to tell you what they're offering it for, but if you're buying from uh, Univar or Onda or whoever your vendor is, Target Specialties, whoever is uh, your, your go-to vendor, uh, certainly they would be able to quote you on it. Uh, and I think we'll find that it's uh, going to be uh, uh, priced very, very reasonably compared to the other green products out there on the market. And keep in mind, you're also going to have a savings by not needing to buy the other larvicides. Um, and from the corporate office, the cost is around two to five dollars per finished gallon, depending upon the dilution rate. Um, how long should ER3 last when treating bushes, trees, and grass? Uh, we think it's going to give you a couple of weeks, good strong weeks of uh, residual out there in those instances. And of course, that is all dependent upon climatic conditions. You know, is it going to rain hard? And wash some of it off and things like that. But if you can get a couple of good weeks with the adulticide barrier treatment, and then uh, keep in mind, you're gonna probably get that additional week through the larvicidal action. We think that you're probably gonna be okay providing a service that covers uh, uh, three to four weeks of, of program time. And um, just from past experience, uh, with, with all our mosquito control efforts in the company that I used to work for, that's about what we were getting with the uh, pyrethroid products that we were using there as well. Great. Dennis, can you tell us more about the mode of action for mortality of both the adults and larvae? How does it actually kill mosquitoes? Okay. Um, that's a great question, and it's one that relates to the resistance factor as well. Uh, the, uh, most of the products that we currently use out there in the market for everything work on the nervous system. Uh, and this product does not. It actually works on an enzyme within the, uh, the mosquito or within the insect itself. So it's breaking down the enzymes that these uh, critters need. And these enzymes are only found in insects. They're not found in uh, vertebrate pests. So that's another part of the safety factor. 
and uh, when it when it breaks these enzymes down in their body, uh, then we're finding that we're getting that knockdown and we're not having recurrency. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry if I said recurrency earlier. Uh, we're not getting resistance issues because of it, because there's nothing else out there being used that works on these enzymes. Um, you know, everything else, again, as we said, was working on the nervous system. So uh, that's, in effect, what it's doing, both as a uh, adulticide and larvicide. You know, the larvicide, they're, they're actually going to just, as they go through the water looking for the organic matter as, as a food source, they're ingesting it. So, uh, again, it's, uh, it's breaking down these enzymes that uh, only the insects possess. And um, why is there any reason why this cannot be used in thermal foggers? Uh, I'm not going to say there's any reason it can't be. Uh, I just don't see the need to. Uh, you know, it, it works much better as a mist. I've not tried it. I don't have any kind of verifiable uh, data to say that it wouldn't be effective in a thermal fogger. Uh, we like using the misting applications with the high volume, high volume air blast and uh, find that it works very, very effectively that way. Great. And we also would like to mention that the product is available at all major distributors, Univar, Oldham, BWI. Um, Dennis, um, one final question. Are we, will we be sharing the slides? I know that we are recording and we'll share this. Um, presentation online, but um, will you share the PowerPoint for training purposes? Uh, yeah, again, as you said, this is being recorded, uh, so it should be made available to everybody for your use uh, in the recorded process. Um, I believe, and I'll leave that up to you, Bobby, as the organizer that will be able to actually email all the attendees a copy of the presentation. Uh, when it's over and I'm pretty sure that we'll put it on the website uh, so it will be available to download there and like we said the video itself is on the website already uh, and then there's some other uh, uh, the protocols uh, there's a one-page protocol that breaks this all down and in the back of that protocol we actually have the mosquito reduction inspection report uh, available that can be downloaded uh, and then uh, PCT actually did a great little article for us uh, about a month ago, and uh, that is available as a reprint as well. So uh, there's a lot of information along with that brochure that can be used for training purposes. Great. So we will follow up with a label. I'm being asked that again, and um, also the presentation to all. Um, Thank you all for attending today. We will be doing another presentation next Wednesday, same time. It will be the same presentation, but if you have anyone that, that wasn't able to make it today, we hope they'll join us then. Um, again, look for the presentation on the website, and we will follow up with an email with the presentation slides as well as um, the label uh, via email. Thanks, everyone, so much.